Hey kids, well, sit down, sit down. Hey kids, you are about to listen to a comedy podcast. What did I say? What did I say? You're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that none of this is medical advice. Okay, you sit down right now or so help me. If you need medical advice or medical care, please don't you dare. I'm going to count to three. One. I'm sorry. Please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. And let's get one thing straight here. You cannot cancel Dr. London. You cannot cancel the Jock Doc Podcast. It will not work. We don't have enough listeners for that to be effective. Nope. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello, and welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. LondonSmith.com. I would like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as inefficient detrusor muscle activity, and all the fellows in the house say what? Say what? So I will try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Yes. Here to help with that is our producer Cameron. Howdy, Dr. London. Howdy. So Cameron is so dedicated to making sure that our podcast stays relevant that when he heard that Bastille Day was coming up, he began painting himself head to toe in camouflage in preparation to go, quote, steal them bass. So, Cameron, so you know Bastille Day isn't isn't a stealing bass day. Yeah, but you're misunderstanding everything that I'm doing. I'm, okay. I am painting myself in camouflage, but not traditional camouflage. I'm painting myself to look like the lead singer of Bastille. You know, okay. the band that's okay. like, hey, oh, 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 hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, Yeah, no, I, I'm familiar. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so I'm, I'm camouflaging myself as him so that I can you go can on steal? stage with them okay. and I'm sort of camouflaged in and then I can steal the bassist's bass. Okay. So, so I wasn't wrong on the, for ba- Bastille Day, you are stealing a bass, but it's from the band Best. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. By camouflaging follow. myself as that guy. Yeah. Uh, well, and just for our, for the sake of our listeners to clarify, so Bastille Day is actually a, a French holiday marking the anniversary of storming the Bastille, which you know it marked a turning point in the French Revolution in 1789. But uh, it's also just with like us, it's just like. Uh, Les Mez. Oh, you mean Les Miserables? Is that? Mm, these people weren't Miserables. Nope. These Leses in this was not Miserables. Wow. Okay. I guess maybe we're talking about different things then. So, what? Like, actually, I guess I maybe I don't want to know. So, also with us is Did you in the house? This is one DJ. This is one DJ. Don't DJ one DJ. Don't with. Don't with. All the fellows in the house say, whoa. I'm Dr. Lennon Smith. I would like to be relevant. I would like to be relevant. I would like to be relevant.
tells me that we can expect a... Oh, it's a doctor today. That's right, Dr. London. Okay. Because you keep hounding me again for our guests. It yeah, seems like just... I, I bring in these people. We have some of the wackiest people, some of the funniest people, some of the kookiest people that I've ever met. And yet every single week you're like, these people aren't professionals. They're not offering any kind of advice. They're not helpful to anyone that keeps keying my car. Please tell them to stop keying my car. Yeah. Well, it's the, the keying my car does really get on my nerves. And the, but that doesn't even matter. with. Like, stop bringing your car. Oh, that's, that's what you see as the problem. Yeah. Yes. Cause you There'd are, be nothing to key uh, if your car wasn't there. Right. Well, uh, before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. So concrete was being poured in my neighborhood today for a new sidewalk, and this note was written apparently to me along with some handprints next to it. And I, I got to say, some of our notes from the listeners, they kind of feel like they have more context than I'm necessarily aware of. But anyway, this one appears to be an exchange of sorts. The note reads, quote, My ex-husband, James, if you're reading this, you owe me half your estate. And, and then I think this is a reply of, Come get it yourself. Okay, and then the, the response, uh, Lift the restraining order against me and I will. And then back, uh, Not till you give me my son for Father's Day. Okay, now yeah, but the, Dr. London, I'm, I, can I interrupt you here for a second? You, why, okay. why do you think that this is directed towards you in any way? It kind of sounds like it's directed towards one specific person who is then replying. Yes. Yet, what is this arrogance that you see something written in the sidewalk that's clearly written to someone, not you? And you say, oh, I bet this is about me. Oh, this is to me. <laughs> yeah, I guess... Okay, I guess I didn't see it that way. Because, like, you know, it's my neighborhood, you know? Yeah, I mean, is it even in front of your house? Well, it's... A lot of... Th much of the world is technically in front of my house, you could say. Okay. That is so. extremely fair, yeah. Yes. Right, so... Anyway, I, we, we, I guess we can finish the, the quote there. Yeah, I mean, this is just just calling into question all of these bizarro notes that you've been finding over the last few months you find stuff like like tacked to a sandwich and now i'm questioning uh -huh. was this your sandwich or is this a note left for somebody else then you just stole the sandwich because you said oh this must be mine well, i like I mean, bread if the farm i like yeah bring sandwiches so, so you okay so you you're at work at your doctor's office or hospital or wherever you work and right. you look in the fridge and you see two pieces of bread and stuff in between that you, and you did not make this item you did not purchase it nope but what do you think when you see that well i i look for a note first thing uh-huh and, and if there is one well then i you know i i think oh okay good so some listener feedback i can know how to improve my podcast <sighs> so i can educate better you know in the medical world this is making so much sense so uh our listeners are leaving you clues wow. yeah okay good because i'm sorry for a second i was really i was becoming unsure of myself listeners i want to thank you so much for leaving all these secret spicy clues for dr london to find leaving messages to another person in front of someone else's house and it being some sort of code that maybe we'll figure out at the end of this episode, that's genius. I love it. Okay. I love our listeners, Dr. London. I know. They're, they're so much more involved and ubiquitous than I would have expected. Yep. Um, well, anyway, so yeah, to this listener, thank you so much for, for chiming in here. Uh, it sounds like maybe there's a custody battle you know going who's on. A, you know who I found out is a listener this week uh i found out okay. that we have like a pretty high profile listener is it, is it bono no no okay. it's not bono okay would you want bono as a listener you know he pretends to have have like eye problems to 
avoid taxes or something. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was to wear sunglasses. No, it's someone way cooler than Bono. It's David Blaine. Okay. The magician and stalker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He multitasks. Yeah. And part of the pussy posse. Oh, okay. I was watching the David Blaine TV show or whatever, his street magic that he used to do or whatever, from like seven or eight years ago. And then he was talking to a doctor. And then while he was talking to the doctor, he like did some magic tricks. And then after that, he did some magic tricks with Troy Aikman, which is jock sports stuff. Yes. And so I was like, that is such a fun nod to our podcast. And it's so cool. It really shows that like our listeners are really everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to make some other point, but yes, yes, that's, you know, I just, I like hearing back from the listeners and it's, and that David Blaine is our biggest listener. Apparently. And biggest fan. It was in his show. Okay. Yeah. We've been featured. Nope. All right. Um, in any case, yeah. So, so thank you for listening. Now for today's medical topic, squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is one of the lung cancers in the group of non-small cell lung cancers. Non-small cell lung cancer is often insidious, so it produces no symptoms until the disease is well advanced. Uh, One of the most common signs and symptoms of lung cancer, or some of them would include cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, coughing up blood, you could have wheezing, hoarseness. Are we um, still yeah. talking about lung cancer? Yes. We're still on this subject? Yes. Yeah, well, it's... Dr. They, London, just... every person who was diagnosed with lung cancer when you first started this series is is unfortunately gone by now. Aww. I hate to say that, but it's been going on for that many weeks. So, so it's it's only been a couple weeks, I think. Like, we, there are yeah. only so many types... I mean, look, I get it. Smoking is cool. It's badass. I smoke. Who doesn't smoke? Wait. Every person I know loves to smoke. But yeah, you're going to get lung cancer. And I yeah, wouldn't call it You're going to go away. What you do, I wouldn't call smoking. Well, it's like vaping. Yeah, but out of a balloon. Well, yeah. So, like, so it's to call it smoking. Like, I guess it's. It's more what? of an absorbing, I guess. Yeah. Well, just... I mean, is it just helium that you're inhaling? I don't know what it is half the time. Okay. All right, well, in any case, so patients can have recurrent infections, such as bronchitis and pneumonia, as well as constitutional symptoms like weight loss and a loss of appetite. Uh so you can have signs of metastasis and so that's when the cancer is spread from its original location and that may include bone pain spinal cord impingement and neurological problems like headache weakness or numbness of limbs uh, dizziness and seizures to diagnose um, you'll do your usual physical exam and blood count complete blood count uh, and then x-ray is usually the first test performed Um, for squamous cell carcinoma in particular squamous is one of those where you think squamous central smoking you know words like that so this is a centrally located cavitation but could also show pulmonary nodular mass we just done a widening uh hyalur enlargement or pleural effusion a previous x-ray is also very helpful to check for the rate of lesion growth so uh whenever you have a patient in which you suspect this you should be checking for another x-ray uh there are many methods of confirming the diagnosis, um, and that depends on you know where the lesion is and other things. So uh, you may in- include bronchoscopy, sputum cytology, thoracoscopy, and transthoracic needle biopsy. Um, and of course, then you also. Dr. London, are you not gonna? I guess. I mean, are you not gonna I, answer that? I try. I just okay. I was really in the middle of it, and I really I could hear it. Okay, fine, but, fine, fine. I'll answer. You continue. You continue doing what you're doing, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna answer it. Okay. 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 So along with diagnosing, staging must also be done in order to find out the extent of the yeah. spread of the squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, chest CT scan is the standard for staging lung cancer, and will no, take I into know. account. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Okay, hey. Okay. But just... So... So the CT scan will take into account sorry. the size. Are you... What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, you, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm, on, I'm, I'm still on the phone. Okay. So okay. the main so treatment options see. for... Some, uh, non-small cell lung cancer are surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. But because most lung cancers Baymax. cannot be cured with current treatments, but skilled with palliative care no is important. Pickles, but I want I want the the pickles from the first one to be added to the second one. I'm sorry. Okay. Did did a restaurant call you? What's that? Did a restaurant call you to ask if you want to order food? Y- oh yeah. Yes, is that I hadn't I hadn't I hadn't I hadn't come by today and they were getting worried about me so they called in to check. Okay, so this is this is normal for you to get a call from a because normally people call a restaurant. Yeah, if they and you're want actually food. keeping me long right now. I have other obligations, you know, which are to eat a meal. Yeah, to run by the the restaurant. Yeah, that's why they're worried about. Okay, so okay. you continue doing what you're doing. No, I'm 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 all, just one more thing to say, which is you want then, go ahead and advise all patients to stop smoking on the, if they smoke. That one, and if you could sort of make them into a, a like a smiley face on the bottom. Okay, and then what are the what are the toys you have? Okay, no, no, don't want that one. I'm sorry, what kind of toys are they Do offering? Do you have any you know, older ones from, like, last month or whatever? Ugh. No. Ugh. Elsa. Okay, well... Okay. Can you take that? Can you take the... Can you take the bottom part of that? Yeah, and then put it on... Put it on the head of that. And then if you just, and then put the pickles, yep. Okay. All right, thanks. Love you. <clears throat> sorry about that, Dr. London. I, I'm sorry. I, it's been a busy day for me. Yeah. What restaurant gives you toys with your meals? Uh, well, I don't want to do any free promo, but let's just say it's a place where these meals might be happy. And they, you go to this place every day to the point that they will call you if you haven't shown up yet. Yeah, because they're worried. Because they actually care. Well, I, when I, I didn't show up on this show, which is half the time, you don't even call to check on me. You just send me an email about how mad you are again. Because I'm late. Or I forgot. Well, yeah, because... You know, we have a scheduled recording time every time. So yes, if you yeah, but sometimes I'm busy because I'm at the place with the meals that are happy. Right. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm I'm finished with the medical lesson for now, so we can we can go ahead and move on from there. Brand new. All right, Cameron. You said that we have a a, a doctor as a guest today. Is that right? That's right, Dr. London, because you've been so abusive towards our non-doctor guests. I thought that this would sort of be a requirement. Yeah, I guess, no, that's, you know, it's it's it's, it's not a I, I get it. You're just like any other employer in the country today where someone has to have a certain degree before you'll even be willing to speak to them. I understand it. It's just how your coastal elitist brain works. Yes. Yeah, well, it's it's a medical education podcast. So that's nope. That's really the reasoning there. I want them to be medical. But I'm sorry, we're we're talking. Um, hello, uh, doctor. This is um this is Cameron, my our producer. Uh, my name is Dr. London Smith. Dot com. What was your name? My name is Doctor Jade. That is uh, okay. spelled J, and then the A with the E next to it, really close, and then it just wraps up with a nice D and then a nice E. Yeah, that's Dr. very G. interesting is that your i mean is that your given born name uh no actually it is not i changed it several years ago uh to dr jade first name doctor second name jade and oh. it's so nice to be here on the program yes oh I'm sorry. so okay do you say your your first so your first name it's 
Doctor isn't a title for you. It's a name. It's, there's been a lot of controversy, especially in, in, in my area of study, about what constitutes a doctor, who should give you that title. Uh, do I see myself as a doctor? Absolutely. Uh, do my patients? Yes. Uh, does the state medical board nope. uh, in all 50 states? Unfortunately, no, not yet, but we are working on that. Oh. But you know what they say is that your perception is your reality. So if from your perspective, from your vantage point, if you are a doctor and that is your reality, who am I to to speculate that that's not real, you know? Absolutely. And that's the kind of viewing of the world that I cannot find with medical schools or hospitals. Ugh. And it, yeah. it, it really makes me upset. And Elitist snobs. As a doctor, I think I'm entitled to having a doctor job. Yeah, well, you say as a doctor, as as someone who changed their name to doctor. So, That's you right. know, a doctorate, it's not just the, the title of doctor. It's because they earned a doctorate. Don't call our guest it. That's weird and disrespectful, Dr. London. It's actually Dr. Jade is the it's name It's Dr. There. Jade and not Dr. It. Okay. okay it's I'm a not... human being. I'm sorry for that misunderstanding. But in any case, um, but I'm sorry to, I to focus. Know, I want to I dig in a little on the name, though. So, Dr. Okay. Jade, what was your name before? Is that something you'd be willing to share with us? Uh, Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson? Brad Johnson, yeah. Brad Johnson was my name before I thought it didn't sound like a doctor's name. I thought Dr. Yeah. Jade sounds more like a doctor's name. Brad Johnson so sell, sounds like uh maybe like a kind of like beef jerky that's been discontinued. And I don't that is the furthest thing from what I want to say to the public is to eat beef jerky. It's the opposite mm -hmm. of that, in fact. I want I want the world to, to I want to the, the world to look at the world with with more of an accepting worldview. Yes. Well, and the opposite of an accepting worldview is eating beef jerky. Eating beef jerky. That's right. That's yeah. right. Full of carcinogens. I do. Yep. So, I, so you know that you can, instead of, you know, changing it, like if you felt like your name didn't convey doctor. So a lot of doctors, actually all doctors will go to school to earn the, the title and that'll be the method. And then no matter what your name is, you'll have doctor in front of the name. And do you see this, how that's... I, I, I do see what you're getting at. A lot of people have told me uh, similar stories on how the title doctor is, is, uh, is obtained. I just don't... I don't feel like going to medical school. It, and I think a lot of people would agree with me there. It, yes. Medical school, yes. is it seems long and hard. And... And what, for a degree, for someone to tell me I'm allowed to change my name to doctor? And I've heard it's well, boring. Yes. It's got to be yeah, boring. Okay. I've heard you can't, and that you can't, you can't play on your phone in class. They get mad at that. Yeah, it's, well, the, I depends don't, on yeah. the class. But it, so, yes, it's, it's long and boring, but that's part of what makes it such a, you know, a highly esteemed title. So you admit it, you admit to it. You've been trying to run this scam all along, Dr. London, and you just admitted that it's boring and slow and stinky or whatever you had said. Yeah, the the process of earning it. That's it's difficult, it's arduous, you know. But at the end you get yes, to help people. Those are things that I don't like to invite in my life. Um things that are boring, things I can't be on my phone during and things that make me uh, that make me feel like I'm uh, not up to the task of uh, of completing. It, it it seemed hard, so I said it's not for me, and that's my decision. And it's okay. gross. It it's sounds so good. gross. The stu the amount of like icky and like sticky stuff you have to touch is disgusting. Yeah, I mean that's okay. So you said that that's you, you aren't into that. What are you into? What what brings you here today? Look, I, longtime followers of, of the Dr. J program have, have followed me through my career of 
selling random things, book books, things like that. Uh, I I have I have stepped into a brand new type of 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 wellness togetherness. I call it wellness togetherness. It's my new approach mm-hmm. to wellness. Okay. Um, as you know, most people know me from my, uh, you know, my success, uh, becoming a doctor without the medical school, mm-hmm. uh, people, the love first of your kind, the f- yes. One of the, one of the first of the kind, it, people knew me from my do it yourself, circumcision, reversal kit, things like that. But I am moving away from the product line and going more into, have you, have you guys heard of these subscription boxes? Ooh, I have sure. heard of these. It's the wave of the future. If you like nature, if you like natural foods, you can get Nature Box delivered to your door in a box, a bunch of natural food for you to cook. You know, there's the uh, the taxidermy chest where they send you animals where you can perform taxidermy. Well, mm-hmm. this is a box that gets delivered to your house, and it's called Shine Cube because it comes in a in a nice cube. And in it is everything you need to know, or every in every tool that you need to have in order to follow my brand new wellness regimen. Whoa. Okay. So this is you're here to promote a wellness regimen, then. A, a wellness regimen where you can sign up for a box to be delivered to your home every week, so you can do the Shine Cleanse. Now, so uh, most of the time with these promotional boxes, the items change from week to week or month to month. You're not getting the same thing over and over again. But it, it sounds seems boring like, to me. Oh, okay. So Thanks. you're sort of this is you're sort of looking at this with a new paradigm. I've kind this of always sort been of a, an like innovator. an innovative. Yeah, you you're speaking my language. Uh, wow, you're definitely speaking my language, uh, producer Cameron, and I appreciate I'm you. Have you this. considered becoming a doctor? <gasps> Can you do that? Yeah. Is this no, like is this no, like no, getting cannot. ordained where it's like someone who's ordained can ordain someone else or something like that? No. It's almost exactly like that. And as a doctor, let me tell you, it is almost exactly like being ordained. Wow. wow. So do I have to kneel or is this like is this like a knighting thing? Yes. You could it's, you could kneel. I think that that feels right to me in my brain. Okay. In my heart. So okay, well, just Doctor London, reiterate. don't take this away from me. Let me do this real quick. Okay, all right. So I'm kneeling. Da- I'm I'm kneeling. I'm kneeling down. Well, you don't have to get on your face. What? Okay. So so what, now now what? <clears throat> let me find the uh, let me find the script here. Uh, by the power invested in me by uh, whoever wants to become a doctor, I now pronounce you. A man who's a doctor. Yes. Yes. So, and so now anything that I say is as smart as what dummy Dr. London says, right? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I knew so it. You seemed, so you seemed surprised by the prospect of making someone else a doctor, but you also had a script ready. It, have, is this the first time you've been asked to, to make someone a doctor? No, no, I've uh, I've been known in my community as a, you know, as a man who spreads the joy, spreads the love of being mm. a doctor, spreads around, you know, making more, evangelizing doctor the doctor. Bestowing. Prof- yes, Doc, bes- thank you, doctor bestowation. Because unlike you, Doctor London, he's not a gatekeeper who tries to keep people out of the profession. Who says, "Oh, you can't do that because you haven't taken these classes and you don't know what that body part is." Yeah. What Dr. Jade does here is that he's accepting of everyone and says, hey, you can be a doctor and you can be a doctor. And hey, you, hey, you're just a little, you're a dog. You're just a pet dog. You can be a doctor. Many dogs well, have become doctors under my uh, supervision. Yes. Yeah. Well, and just to, just to clarify once more, I think a lot of people could be doctors if they, you know, work hard and apply themselves Boo. and put in the time. No, we and just, we... We already said that that was gross and a waste of time and annoying and boring. And while technically okay. true, it's not the only way to achieve a goal. Have you ever heard that saying, there are multiple roads to the same area? Yeah, have you heard that, Dr. London? Have you heard that? Have you heard that? Because it's a, it's a quote I wrote several years ago. And if you heard it, it's I, I was going to say, I, it, it sounds similar to some quotes I've heard, but sort of 
phrased more simply. Yeah, it, it sounds more like some, something someone might say when looking at a map than it is sort of a saying that in a metaphorical sense, but yeah, it's kind of an analogy and a metaphor all in one. And, uh, Mm-hmm. And Powerful. yeah, yeah, I okay I, so, because but... I I personally believe that everybody within their hearts and every person is so beautiful that they they have what it takes to produce a doctor esque thought. Okay, and when you say you a doctor esque thought, yes. So once again, whenever I articulate medical knowledge, that's because of the time I've spent studying it. When you say a doctor thought do you just mean because i i think of a depth of knowledge whenever i think of a doctor mm-hmm. thought right. what do Me you too. mean i agree with you it's a depth of thought um and uh, some people think well, so deeply that they have the depth of thought not i kind of combine those into the a similar part of the body using your head to get out of tricky situations what is, what what does a doctor do? He goes, "There's a sick guy. Let me think of a way to to treat him." Right? Uh, what else? What else does a smart guy do? He goes, "Oh, what's the best way to, to? What's the what's the easiest way I can get to being a doctor?" I, 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 I it, it, it sort it's to me it sort of sounds like that thinking is basically the exact same as learning. I would have I would have to agree because what is right? thinking and what is. This is all a bunch of boring doctor school talk, you know, and, and I, I just want to give people the opportunity to get their ideas out there on a medical platform that didn't have to go through the boring school. A lot of people like me don't thrive in a school environment. They thrive in a, you know, wandering around someone's garden, pretending it's foraging kind of environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where a lot of these doctor thoughts that we were talking about before, thoughts were, of course, talking about sort of like Instagram girls' thoughts. And these doctor thoughts that Dr. Jade has so kindly taken under his wing, and they're sorry, learning from a sort of uh, different perspective outside yeah. of the normal you know, school yeah. curriculum by yeah. foraging in the garden, things like that. When you say thoughts, Cameron, do you mean the Instagram thoughts? Are you talking about the... The short T H O T the yes that yeah hottie is, over there. This is what Doctor Jada told me before we had started recording. I want I want to paint thoughts. you a picture. I want to I want to paint you a picture. You doctor to doctor to doctor. Now that there's three doctors here, oh. when you become a doctor, you can only save I don't know a hundred people a day. I've broken that record myself. But uh, imagine if you were to uh, like like I do, evangelize my doctoralness, make other people doctors. The more people they save, the more people I save. It kind of becomes sort of a triangular upward right. mobility of, of, doc, of doctordom and, and doctor-esque thoughts. Yeah. Sort of like the people you save then go and save other people and you get a percentage of that saving. Yeah, it's a, I call it the triangular method. So, yeah. Okay, I guess, and it sounds a little bit almost like you're describing a pyramid scheme, but let's go to your subscription box now yes. that our listeners know a little yeah, bit I about. Hear, I want to hear about what's in the box and yeah, what your your program is. Okay, the program is a revolutionary approach to wellness where one, uh, where where one gazes upon the source of all life okay uh, you might be thinking what is this guy talking about what is the source mm-hmm. of all life is it water no it's the sun right we i have developed a a foolproof method to wellness that involves staring directly into the sun for up for as little as 45 seconds a day some of my students have made it up to you know an hour and a half a day of direct wow staring into the sun I, uh, time. That, and that seems unhealthy. It does seem unhealthy, but at the same time, Mr. Doctor, uh, penicillin was actually mushrooms. Okay? Mm-hmm. Those I'm are sorry, dangerous. to clarify, Say what? I, I think you're more Mr. Doctor, whereas I would be Dr. London. Do you, no. do you see the difference there? 
No, if you were to leave off my first name and just use my surname, it would be just Dr. Jade. Uh, okay. But yes, we, but anyway. and we, we, this subscription box supplies you with everything you need to do that, which means every week you'll be getting, you know, a, a, a custom paper towel to wipe your brow. Mm-hmm. To wipe your brow? Is that is that part of staring at the sun? No, that's I mean, just to wipe the sweat. Be produced. Yeah. Okay. Is that the, is that the, was that the end of the box? Yeah, staring at the sun. That's, that's the end of the box. Okay. Yeah. So, so okay, so the so mm. can I ask how much this costs? A seventy nine ninety nine USD per month, uh, and that increases the longer uh, that you are a part of this a part of this mailing list. And uh, we've, we, we, I, we were almost sold out. So if you want to wow. get in on the ground level, you're going to want to go to www.shinebox.cc slash shinebox underscore 516. Okay. I mean, that so- sounds... Well, hold on, Dr. London. I don't, I don't think you're taking in how amazing a deal this is. Because you're paying a monthly, you're paying once a month, but you're getting mm-hmm. boxes weekly. Mm-hmm. So each seventy nine ninety nine payment, increasing, yes. of course, of course, is basically four boxes. That's four times but, better than like Loot Crate and like Nerd Box and Pierogi Box, which is a box service I subscribe to. So, well, there's one bit of clarification. So I thought what you were gonna say was that like you at least had one of those sort of Eclipse style glasses like whenever there was that eclipse where you had you know glasses where you could safely look at the sun but Mm -hmm. you i didn't hear any mention of sunglasses so you're just having people stare directly at the sun i am the the problem with those sunglasses is that they do a great job of filtering out some of the uh uv lights which are ultra virtuous incredibly light yeah harmful and And staring directly at that light would but cause eye a, damage. Well, but the sunglasses are going to block the healthy benefits of staring at the sun, Doctor London. The vitamin D, the vitamin mm. E. I'm sure there's more vitamins. I just I, I get bored when I count all the vitamins that I get from oh, it. Oh God, yeah, there's so many. It's just a lot, you know. Uh, plants love it. I mean, it's it's the reason we're all here. Why not soak up as much as you possibly can? So, well. So and also, why do we have to wear sunglasses when the sun wears sunglasses? I've seen lots of pictures and depictions of the sun wearing sunglasses, and I don't understand if he's wearing sunglasses. And why do I have to wear sunglasses? It sounds almost like a marketing ploy, like it's someone's being paid by by Oakleys. Yeah, and I I that disgusts me. You know, to Ugh. take something like the sun and try to profit off of it disgusting Uh, it's uh, yeah it's gross to me and that's why i've been uh so so excited to talk about this this shine box i'm sorry yeah another question you you think it's disgusting well you think it's disgusting for someone to try to profit off the sun what isn't Mm -hmm. your entire program specifically that no no because that's where you are confused i'm profiting off of the idea of telling people to stare into the sun. The sun has the thought. Basically nothing to do with this. Yes. The doctor-esque PhD-ified thought that I had as a doctor. T-H-O-T. And that's what it is. It will give you more than what I am taking from you, which is a, a, a measly small amount of money per month for a weekly box. That increases over time. That increases at an time, exponential yes. and much quicker pace. Yeah, yes. I was going to ask yes. how much it increases by. Cameron, you say that as if you already know. Have you? Oh, I'm already you a haven't subscriber. Subscribed to He's this. a subscriber. That's how I got on the show. Yes, I'm one of the first subscribers, Doctor London. Oh, you're the... you're one of the first, and you're on the ground floor still before they sold out. Oh yeah, God. He told when he first told me about this on our minecraft server yes and he was telling me about this i knew it was something special i remember that day vividly uh you were my uh fifth meeting that day in the minecraft uh server and uh, you were really the first person to really 
to really really understand what I was saying. And I that's I feel why like I, you were the first person to really understand what I was saying. And you'll find that a lot in a lot of these Minecraft servers, just people who just vibe together. And and that's why I couldn't I couldn't stand to see you walk out of that server without a subscription to my Shine Box service. And I'm so glad that I did. My brow would have gotten so sweaty if not for these sweat prevention pads that I get every single week. Okay. And I can't thank um, you enough, doctor. You're very welcome and I'm gl- I'm so thankful that you've done everything that you could do to uh, you know, spread the message, you know, get me on this show and of course all the people that you've you've sold to. I cannot thank you enough. I want to hear. I want to hear success stories. People who have used this product. Have you heard? And, of, and what like, their vision is like right now? Yeah, vision twenty twenty. Everyone's talking about like looking ahead to the future. The, uh, to the twenty twenties. We're in a new decade. I want to hear your vision for and, for your your company. And and can they physically see? Uh, I I do want to address. Both of these questions, but first I want to address the the forward thinking uh, the forward thinking question. I'm I'm thinking, what if there you know what if there were more ways to look at the sun? Maybe a kaleidoscope we could look at the sun through in order to see more versions and angles of the sun. Oh, We've wow. got a lot of research and development, that? and and moving forward, especially especially amongst amidst these these troubling times, uh, this will become. Almost crucial. I'm hoping to have this be added to, you know, the list of vaccinations that, uh, you know, that the government uh, requires us to, to receive, uh, especially when traveling abroad. And, and I would hope to maybe get this uh, to be, you know, something that they in, involve in schools like they did w- with with the lice outbreaks of the 1990s. And so I, the, I see I do, I, my I future. Do yes. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I do have a question about this. Sorry to interrupt, but the what the you want a required vaccine to be looking at the sun through a kaleidoscope? No, this I, will, is my I question want as well. Oh, right. No, I want th- this was just another thing that I'm seeing for our company moving forward. Okay. Uh, just do, that's because... that's just a couple of things about my vision of the future uh-huh. of the company. For one thing, just to clarify Mm-hmm. Staring at the vac- at the sun is not a vaccine. Nope. That, it, that doesn't meet mm-hmm. the definition. Okay. It doesn't We're getting that's... into definitions again and it's it's I'm quite so pedantic. sorry. He's so pedantic. And... It's it's a really annoying and it, he gets all tech especially we're three doctors here. We're yeah. peers. We should all be able to talk to each other on on a normal As level colleagues. without having to get into this sort of like uh uh, you know, uh, gobbledygook, made-up language, blah blah bleep blorp. Mm. Who cares? You know. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's just jargon. I'm sorry that the, we we don't want this show to be a jargon festival. Let's just we're talking about doing something language. really important here, Doctor London, which is getting people to stare into the sun at least 45 seconds a day, which is quicker than getting a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Mm. It's quicker than doing. Um, you know, a couple push-ups, not one push-up. You could do that in forty-five seconds. You could probably do quite a few, actually. But you know, it's quicker than that. Cam, okay. you have really, guess... really, you have really read that literature, and I appreciate that. Yeah, so... it's all I read, man. It's so good, I cannot put it down. The Kathy cartoons you've put on every page make everything so clear to me. And it cost me a pretty penny to to commission that artwork from the original Kathy artist whose name escapes me right now for some reason. But, but boy, did that, did that really sell the product for a lot of, for a lot of folks well, out to, there. to Cameron? Yeah. Right. Um, speaking hypothetically of your dream for t- 2020, the future, let's say someone going to school, school age children, cause you were saying you want this to be a required vaccine. So I, let's say, uh, around one year of age, uh, people will t- typically get the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. That's a very important one. So you're saying that at one of these age groups, the one year old and then like two or three, like one of these times whenever they get all these vaccinations, you think they should be, I guess, escorted into this to, to outside 
made to stare at the sun. Do, are you are you hearing yourself right now? Do you, do you know I'm how just, insane that says? No, I want Dr. at Lundin. one of these age groups, uh, one, three, maybe even two. I haven't ruled out two yet. I want that to be the age where they begin their Shinebox subscription. Uh, okay, so you just want them to... To, to pay for, but that that would still involve staring at the sun so it's not at the doctor's office eventually this is at no home. not at the no this is just a plan that you get on to ensure that you're you're taken care of you know that you are you know that that you are you are utilizing everything available to you in the world to prevent getting sick and telemedicine is so huge these days right you can just talk to a doctor on your phone you don't even have to be there anymore so even if I you, you want the doctor there to help you watch the sun, you can just use your phone. You can just FaceTime them, and you can just be like, maybe you can yeah. point the doctor. The at doctor the sun can or say whatever things like, "Oh, look at this part." You know, it's your phone. You know, that, that, the, it, yeah, it, the, it really, I think it, I think it would benefit a, the, a wide variety of people, a large swaths of the American public, and I think it should be implemented as soon as possible. Okay. And sorry, to, and if you don't do it, you can't go to school or change your name to whatever you want your job to, to, to go back. Because I feel like we may have skipped over this. The testimonials have people lost vision from starting your subscription, from subscribing, from staring at the sun. I don't recall getting any emails from people who have bought the shine cube subscription service saying it sounds like explicitly i can't very see carefully i'm sorry you're breaking uh, i'm carefully yes i am yeah. uh, i do speak very thoroughly as a doctor i ha- mm-hmm. i do not recall uh being made aware of any damage to vision uh i know that when i tried it um with the glasses on I didn't really see like taking I didn't really feel like taking the glasses off would harm me so I I figured it's good it's good to send out there it's good it's good to kick this business off and but as far as the patients no I haven't heard anything from them and you don't think it could be because they're blinded so they they can't feel like they become disabled visually I don't I don't I'm not an op- ophthalmologist, so I can't make that that distinction of whether or not somebody is blind. Okay, that would be stepping on people who went to a lot of years of school to to learn about the eyes. And I can't tell if I'm looking at the right person because both of y'all are just sort of white blobs. But I can say that after doing this program for a few months, I my I feel like my eyes have been healthier than ever. That uh, that's a good testimony right there. That's what I use for the answer to the last question of the testimony. Yeah, thank you, Blob. Thank you, Blob. Okay, and I feel like that might, if you want that to be the answer to the question, I would say possibly Cameron has, you know, he might be experiencing some visual impairment from I, the subscription. I I so, see so where you're coming from, sh- but I would say that he doesn't. And we are both entitled to our doctoral opinions. Mm-hmm. Right. And I okay. I would say, okay, let's say, okay, I'm a big blob to him. What does he now not get to do? Judge me based on my appearance. Yep. Think about that. Absolutely. Okay, so you see this as an advantage for the sake of judgment, judging other people. I'm just saying it's one of many. Well, and I just... How can you prove everything that you do, Doctor Linden? Like every time you work on a patient, can you can you just prove on a podcast that your science and medicine works? Nope. You're asking for something impossible here. I know my eyes are healthier because they're stronger. They feel stronger. They flex constantly. They're constantly pulsing. You don't think the pulsing could be just the uh, the strain of the blood vessels? I. This is all. I guess part that comes from the understanding of having my eyes to... feel meatier than ever, and I'm I love it, and okay. I want to thank Dr. Jade again. Thank you for what you've done, and seriously, man, this is I mean, this is 
changed my life. Now, now are you tearing Cameron, up because of emotions or because of the pain and just it in hurts leaking? so much. God, God, it hurts so much and it won't stop. That means that it is activating. This is discomfort is normal. I imagine no pain go no gain right doctor you told me that pain is just weakness leaving the body and that's another quote that i wrote yes and oh that's a that's a quote that you wrote do you always credit yourself i do yes because there's a lot of people out there trying to take not only my sayings but also my idea for a a subscription box service for an approach to wellness and i just want to make sure that everyone knows that was all me, yeah, baby. Top yours. of the triangle. Right. Well, I is there anything else that we're that you're looking to cover with it? I, I'm not sure that I can endorse this product because it okay. sounds like it is an expensive paper towel, essentially, plus literature that tells you to stare at the sun. And Dr. J just just know that just by him saying the word endorse, we can edit around that and he can easily endorse you. So yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out later. That's awesome. And, and you, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Dr. London, you will be happy to know that I am not looking for your endorsement. I am only looking for your subscription. Deal. Okay. Well, wow. that's, I now also, who's the bigger man, Dr. London. I also don't, so I don't want to go blind. So I, I don't think that Audrey will be a subscriber because, and I already have paper towels. So I don't, I don't see the gain for, on, for me personally. It's these doctors, these American doctors obsessed with Western medicine. And that's all you think counts as real medicine. And that's all you think is counts as real science because you read it in a book that you paid thousands of dollars for instead of a Yahoo Answers questionnaire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it disgusts me. Uh, yeah, so... I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm go, also, on, go on, go d- on. I'm also disgusted. I just want to jump in and say I'm also disgusted. Okay. Blech. Well, We I, take an oath th- in this business. You. Okay, well, uh, th- thank you for coming on the show. I, th- you're, I think... To close us out, I want to hear that oath. The doctor's oath that we all yes. take? All right. The Hippocratic? Because yep. need, I'll, I'll need to take it as well mm-hmm. to really kind of make this thing official. Yep. The, doc, the doctor's oath. <clears throat> Here it goes. The mm-hmm. infamous doctor's oath. Okay. Yeah, this one rhymes, doesn't it? Yeah, and it goes to the tune of Fancy by Iggy Azalea. If we're talking about the... If we're talking about the uh, the fourth version, the fourth revert, revised version, yes. Yes. And it goes like this. I'm a doctor. You already know. I'm in a lab coat. From L.A. to Tokyo. Wow. Okay. So that doesn't sound so much like an oath as it does just replacing a few words from... Uh... From the song Fancy. Fancy. Yeah. But, well, maybe no, you could okay, take that up with your medical school. Yeah. Yeah. May, maybe. Um, I think we'll just stick with the oaths that we have. So we have, you know, the Hippocratic Oath. Not to be confused with the Hippocrite Oath. Anyway, is there any uh, way that listeners can hear more of you outside of this? Or, uh, you know, if they want to hear more about this. Uh, are you on social media? Anything like that? I, I'm I'm only on MySpace. Uh, you can follow my MySpace, um, myspace.com slash uh, Dr. Jade, and doctor is in quotation marks. Can't get that fixed. Uh, but yeah, you can. that's where you can subscribe to my newsletter. That's where you can uh, hear my podcast called Sun Gazing uh, and Me, uh, an, oral his- an oral documentation of my patients testing this out for me. It's a long title. I okay. want to thank you guys. What's your my? What's that? What, what's your MySpace song? Well, it's uh, "Me Singing Over five. Fancy" by Iggy Azalea, uh, but instead of oh, the lyrics, okay. it's the Doctor's Oath. Yeah, because I've known it Very for a sure. long time. Yeah, and you're committed to your cause. Yes, I am. I love that. 
I appreciate that. This really made me feel good. It really made me feel like I connected with two other doctors in my field, and, and mm-hmm. I really got to spread the message of, of, of this wellness plan that I truly, truly believe in. I feel good about it too. And especially, you know, as a doctor, somebody who's worked in this field for a long time, it, it's just really nice to talk to someone who's on the same level mm. um, and who's um, maybe going to offer me a deal on the subscription because, you know, I am, you know, my bills are getting, you know, it's getting really expensive. And so maybe if you could cut me some slack, that would be like, if you can't, that's fine. You I know really, what I mean? I really can't. The IRS is yeah, after oh, oh, me. Totally. I totally, I shouldn't have asked. Yeah, no. Oh, we'll, that was, yeah, that was, sorry. We'll talk. Yeah, anyway. We'll talk. All right. So uh, anyway, thank you to Dr. Jade for, for being on the show, for introducing us to. Thank you. The Dr. J's, you know, regiment for with staring at the sun. Uh, thank you to our producer, Cameron. Thank you to Digital in the House. And it goes like this. I'm a doctor. You already know. I'm in a lab coat from LA to Tokyo. And it goes like this. I'm a doctor. You already know. I'm in a lab coat from LA. I can endorse the Instagram thoughts. T H O T the that body over there. I can endorse the Instagram thoughts. Uh, my name is Dr. Lennon Smith dot com, and this has been the Jock Doc Podcast. See ya. I can endorse the Instagram thought. You wince at the sound of your shirt tearing. This is not going well. But you realize that no one else is going to come looking for you. So you press on. At this point, you are crawling squirming forward a little when the overgrowth becomes too oppressive. You continue on a little further, and suddenly feel the fresh air upon your cheek. You are finally free. Is there anything I can help you with? asks a kind face in a green vest. You look up at the overhanging sign with the words home and garden print upon it, and you grin as you reply. Not anymore. I think I just found everything I need. Speaking of whimsical adventures, don't forget to leave a five-star review of the Jock Doc podcast in which you share of your experiences crawling through plant-rich areas of local stores. And while you're at it, go ahead and share the Jock Doc podcast with a friend or foe. You can send them a link to your favorite episode or just send them our handy website, jockdocpodcast.com and don't forget to take a peek at our posts on social media we are at jockdocpodcast thanks for listening